How do I look? I can't see myself. Well, you would look very nice if you got that shirt off no, it's a giant, and put a giant different shirt. shirt on. It's a giant shirt. Yeah, but I think you'd look much more handsome if you didn't have that shirt on. Wow. We can ask. There's Misha. Misha, let me turn the camera on this one a little bit. Don't you think he would look much better if he didn't have that shirt on? I think he needs a different shirt. No. Something about that shirt telling me it ain't happening. Didn't they lose? Look at the hearts. Didn't you post? It ain't for your shirt, sweetheart. What's wrong? It's because Soul Detox is on. Integrity Force. What do y'all think about this shirt he has on tonight? Should he be in this lesson? Should he be in this camera? I don't know about that shirt. You might get me in trouble. Hey, Dr. Off, what do you think about this shirt? Should he be in this? <laughs> should, he be, life. should he be in this broadcast or should I boo him Giants out of here? For life. Ah, Cheryl said boo. Misha said go upstairs and change, Deacon B. <laughs> Uh-oh, Anthony Coleman said, go Cowboys. Montez, please, please keep the shirt now. Thank you got you. one. You got one, but I only see one, brother. I only see one. How are you doing tonight? He's banned, and that's our super fan. She's a super fan. Who that? Cheryl. And she what? She said, you are banned. I'm not banned. <laughs> he is banned. Poor shirt. Oh, Regina Roth. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Let's get them. Uh-oh. Diggles Madison Sparks. Her and her mom are giant fans That's all right. the way. That's right. So they're going to come on here, and they're going to be on your side. Hello. Right. Alonze. Yancey. I can see it now. Good. Hi, Nikki. God bless everyone coming in. Come on. Let's have a little fun time tonight. Hello, my son. What do you think about the, sh the shirt, Larry M. Percy? He has to go off camera. <laughs> oh, another person. Go Giants. Hi, Sylvia. My son says, New England, stand up. They lost like we lost. <laughs> Amen. Come on in. Yep, there goes Madison. Yay, Giants. Look at, do you see their faces, how they come on? Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Welcome, well, I, welcome. I'll leave y'all too. So detox, amen. So detox. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Come on in. I'm excited about being in here tonight. Larry says no one is losing like y'all, though. <laughs> See, there's a level to losing. Oh, beautiful. And Cheryl says, but love you, Deacon Bernard. <laughs> How beautiful. Come on, Aura. That's right, Nikki. You won't. Not just the shirt, right? He's welcome, but not the shirt. I got you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Well, welcome. So good to see you, Cheryl. I don't think you were on last time, right? You had a lot going on. How's everyone doing tonight? Hi, Nikki. I see Crystal Adgers, Jackie, Dr. Francis Henry. One, come on in. Brenda Berry, Montez. Thank you. Thank you, my hairdresser. Give it all props to her. Gwen Molden. Hey, where are you? In the air? Regina Ross. There goes Anya, our producer. Hi, Anya. Where are you at on um, Periscope? Facebook Live is going up, and Periscope look like they just reached their maximum tonight. <laughs> you all reached your maximum? Hey, CW. Oh, there we go. See, that's what I like about where we are because we say hello to everyone. Yeah, I thought you weren't on and you were missed. See how I noticed you? A super fan always is missed. Always. Hello, Leah. We got Leah on tonight. Very good. Come on in if you can take a moment before we get rolling. Hi, Diane Madison. Before we get um, rolling, uh, Trish Morris, welcome. Um, go ahead and Post this on your Facebook page, your Twitter, Instagram, um, however else you can do it nowadays. You, you, the, the list goes on and on and on. Um, let them know that we're on and we are rolling tonight. We, we are hoping to finish off our discussion on entitlement. Entitlement. And we're going to slide right from entitlement right into, hey, Booker. Booker is always on. 
we're going to slide right into passive aggressiveness. And that is a major one. And I'm finding out that a lot of problems that we have in church and in our ministries. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about without just regular friendships or even just within ourselves. Our church, our ministries, a lot of the problems that we think cannot be resolved or issues that are not to be resolved is truly at the hands of passive aggressiveness. And it needs to be taken out. It needs to be sent back to hell and be put on a shelf. It needs to be burnt in the fireplace. However you deal with it, passive aggressiveness is a sin. Passive aggressiveness um, is just a virus in our computer software. and We don't need it. And a lot of the problems that we have in ministry today. Hello, my Susie Wright. Welcome, Minister Denise Goggins, Mr. and Mrs. Chambly. I see Misha, Minister Mike Tate. Blessed to be back. Very good, Shania. Super fan in the house. Who's my super fans? Let me see if I can find it. I took a picture last time of my super fans, and Cheryl Wilberg was still number one. Still number one. Isn't that amazing? She's been holding that spot for a little while. Susie's here, and that's all that matters. Hello, Minister Denise Carolyn Booker. Hello, Carlene. Welcome. God bless you. Hey, Tate, did you see your boy here? Let me show you real quick. Show him your shirt. Could you believe Mike Tate? He had a nerve to get on so detox with some paraphernalia of the Giants. How dare he do that? We keep all those politics <coughs> off this scope and off this live Facebook. We keep it clean. <laughs> Hello, Adoria. Vanessa, hey, Nessa. You guys are coming in a little slow tonight. And I think I realized Thursday seems to be a better night. I know you all picked Mondays, but when I look at the numbers and all that, there was more on last Thursday than there has been on any Monday since we started in February with Monday nights. Um, I do have some good... <laughs> Alan Chambly said, not that shirt. <laughs> he said, I'll see you Sunday. Shenanigans. Um, in January, we will be doing Soul Detox again for 30 days. Can somebody hashtag that? Hashtag Soul Detox 30 days. We're going again in January. I've been already working. <laughs> I've already been working on um, what our lessons are going to be and where we should be at that point. You can't do Thursdays. That's why you weren't on that Thursday. See? We'll have to work that out, Cheryl, because I, I, I can't have that. A super fan has some weight. You have some say-so here. Can't get it to come up. But I took pictures, and I saved the pictures, and they are all um, being used right now for these broadcasts, so I can't use either of them. But welcome. Come on in. We've got uh, Facebook Live up to 30, and Periscope finally hit 10, so I think that's enough for me to get going replay always outdoes live anyway so detox 30 days that's right come on and help me out say hello to our family say hello to our delegates we are all online tonight say hello to our delegates and um if you can go ahead hello tamara post on your page hi sweet lady 35 i see your beautiful smile missed you all tonight in springfield but if you can go ahead and post on your page that we're on, we can go ahead and get started. Hello, Chris Blake. I had already said that in January we will be doing 30 days again. Uh-oh, I got a super heart for Misha. Uh-oh, Cheryl. Misha shut the screen down. What's a super heart? I just came across the screen that I'm getting super hearts for Misha. I don't even know what those are. Hey, Clifford Johnson. Motivator. Shamika Wright, Katrina, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, we talked last time we were on and we talked about entitlement, people who live with the complex of entitlement. Um, so how are we doing with that? Has it been standing out? Have you been able to recognize it in yourself? Have you been able to recognize it in other people? How has this, this stronghold of a personality been manifesting all around you? Is it you? Are you guilty? Can you say, I'm guilty, I'm guilty, it's me? Or 
Can you say, yeah, I've kind of enabled a few people around me, my children included, or my grandchildren, that now they have a sense of entitlement. It is me. Is Jackie three, is that Jackie M or Jackie H? Either way, you're both special to me, but I just want to know who. So we talked about entitlement, entitlement, and it was about adults throwing temp temper tantrums. It was about spoiled adults. And we learn that having a sense of, a t of entitlement is a malignant form of self-love. Can somebody put that on the screen? Entitlement is a malignant form of self-love. It is not good. It is not healthy. It is a malignant form. It is deadly. A deadly form of self-love. Go ahead, Joy Nolan. Now that I see your name come out, I bet you those wheels on that little car was spinning, huh? I have been an enabler. All right, we got people being on here honest already. That's why I love So Detox, because people don't come on here to impress. People don't come on here to um, embellish titles or reputations. People don't come on here to flex their muscles. We come on here saying, guilty, yep, thank you, it's me. It's me, oh Lord. It's one of David's prayer. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep, I've enabled a couple, had to change it. It's real. It's real. Nothing to be embarrassed about, nothing to be ashamed of. But um, it is what it is, and that's why we're on So Detox. We're not boosting up anything besides the deliverance hand of Jesus. And I do want to share with you all, too, that we had, had two people, one a few months ago and one the last time we were up online, that told me that during the teachings that they had to run into the bathroom. And one of them said that they were vomiting, and the other one said they were vomiting, and then in the middle of it, they had other areas of excretion from their bodies. And I told y'all that this is a deliverance ministry. Just because we're not yelling at you or yelling at the spirit or yelling at Satan or laying hands on you or throwing oil on you, do not think that the oil from the Holy Ghost is not on this broadcast and working deliverance to us. And he's working it from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. You are being delivered layer by layer through this broadcast. So don't let anyone tell you anything different. Now, some things will have to be exercised in a different way. I'm not speaking against anything else. I'm just speaking for this flow, this stream that I have open here, that this is deliverance ministry. And I have the messages and I have people who are willing to go live with people who know them personally, um, watching them, that they are telling the truth, that they have been delivered through this broadcast. So glory to God in the highest. Amen. I can give credit to whom credit is due. Beautiful. Thank you, Regina. So we talked about uh, that, the, that the stronghold of entitlement is a malignant form of self-love. It is a malignant. It is not healthy. It is deadly to you of self-love. You never learned self-love. So you have a form of self-love, but there's no power in it at all. And that it, the sense of entitlement also um, harms the people who are closest to you. It harms the people closest to you. So you may be at the end of someone who has this entitlement complex, or you may be the one that has this entitlement complex. Either way, there's hope. Don't worry about it. We're going to help the, um, we talked from the beginning, we're going to help the enabler, and we're going to help the um, abuser. We're, we're on both sides of the team here. We are blessed that we're able to help both sides of the team. And we also learn that because entitlement is a malignant form of self-love, it is also, it also harms the people. Thank you very much, Angie. It also harms the people who are closest to you. It is also a passive and an aggressive disregard of others. So you can't just pick one side. It's not just a passive disregard for people. It's passive and aggressive. That's why I wanted to teach this one first before we went in and taught um, on passive aggressiveness because this is passive and aggressive it works at the same time it is a complex or it's either you can call it a personality stronghold it's linked to narcissism do you know anything about narcissism after we finish um 
passive aggressive, we're going to go into narcissism. It was just like we're walking up this ladder for troubles that we need to bring down in our life, bring down in our loved ones and get us some help because we do not have to live with this pseudo form of love and this pseudo form of self love and this um, pseudo form of thinking we deserve the best. Remember also that I mentioned when I started giving the list of um, some of the ways to identify this personality is um, that they have this saying. Does anyone remember the saying? Does anyone recall the saying? Ooh, yes. Come on, you're coming up. Hello, Glory888. Hello, Tawana. Welcome. Come on. Help me out. What was it that I said? What is their saying that they always say about themselves? Who's going who's gonna to guess it for me tonight? Yep, you're right, Crystal. It's attached to narcissism. But there's a saying that they always say. It's something that they believe that they're doing. Something that they believe that they are um, working out for their own good. But while they are working this thing out for their own good... It's really you who are working it out from them because they are entitled to everything that you have. I have a gift for you tonight. If you're going to be able to tell me what their saying is, there is a special gift for you in here tonight. I'm going to give you a few more minutes before I start. Hello, Minister Caritha. Ah, Vonetta! Vonetta got it. Could you go get the two things so I can show her what she got? I was going to keep it a secret and just put it in the mail to whoever won, but I, I like gifts right on my desk. Other way, other door. I like gifts, and um, I want to show you what I got. It Yes, now Integrity Force is saying it. Absolutely. I got to do what I got to do. Isn't that what they say? Well, I got to do what I got to do. I got to take care of this. I got to do what I got to do. What you want me to do? Um, you don't understand? I got to do what I got to do. But every time they say, I have to do what I have to do, it always involves somebody else doing what they really have to do. They don't like responsibility. They don't like accountability. Um, sometimes they don't even like work. They feel that they are entitled to what everybody else has, what everybody else earned, what everybody else worked for, what everybody else suffered for, prayed to pay the price for. They believe that they are entitled to that. And I'm going to tell you why. We're going to see who can remember that. Do you see it, husband? Okay. Vanetta is our winner tonight. Come on, can somebody put up some hands, some dap? Can we put up some balloons or something up there? She won tonight. She got it. Absolutely. Thank you. Vanetta is the one. She's the girl. She is the pearl. And it's amazing because she just purchased her logo I saw online, created and, and got her logo um, online for her beauty business. And I think that's just wonderful. That's right, Nicole Coleman. Come on, lift her up. Thank you, Lord. Let's see. That's right, Minister Caritha. So this is going to be so her too. It's amazing. This is the first thing that we have. You know, everything is about detoxing our soul, even in our gift giving and our um, gift subscriptions. Everything's about detoxing the soul. So we have tea of life and it's for wellness of detoxing the soul. So that's one of two that we have for you, Vonetta. You got some good tea. The fall is coming. Winter is coming. And you need this tea. And it's all about the detox. It's 50 tea bags in here. Um, green tea, rosemary, cumin, uh, coriander, turmeric. And that's a, that's a real good one. I know I said it wrong, but that's a good one. Oregano and fennel with lime flavors. All about the detox. Come on, somebody help me out. All about the detox. Hey, Tony, love. Thank you for feeding us. Go ahead, Vonetta. Now, let me show you gift number two, Vonetta, that goes with your tea. And it's all about you. Hello, gorgeous. <laughs> Isn't that you? Isn't that Vonetta, everyone? Coming out with her jewelry line on tonight. And um, she told me that I um, have already been given a gift from her new business. She's going to sew a beautiful necklace into my life. And look at tonight, automatically, I'm, I'm sewn into her life. Thank you, turmeric. Thank you very much. That's why you're my super fan. So she's going to be gorgeous all night long. Look at some of my favorite colors right here. She's going to be gorgeous, and she's going to have her tea, and she's going to detox that body as she sells her jewelry. God bless Vonetta. Amen. Yes, Madison's all about the detox. Yes, Crystal. And they are really good for you. Absolutely. Oh, I'm sorry, Nicole. 
All about the detox, Chris Blake. Good evening, Prophet Thomasina. Yes, great for inflammation. Very good. She's going to be all right. So congratulations, Vonetta. That is the saying that you will always see with the entitled personality is I got to do what I got to do. But trust me, if you are close by them, you are probably the victim. They are not doing anything that they have to do. You are going to end up doing what they have to do. So we have to help those with the entitlement complex because they're, they're, they're stuck. They're really in a place where most of them at a certain point don't even realize anymore that they really haven't done anything that they got to do. Most of it has been someone else. So they wear people out. They burn bridges. Um, friendships don't last long. Um, people who are passive aggressive will end up talking about them behind their back to someone else because they can't confront them in the first place. That was my key there. Um, so it's it's um, good stuff in that tea. That's right. So it's not um, it's not a good good way to stay. And we have to watch, as um, Minister Crystal just put on the screen, we have to watch the enablers because they look for enablers. They search for enablers. And if you are not going to enable them, if you don't have a codependent need in your own cell, they're probably not going to waste their time with you. But they always find a woman or they always find a man because they will always find someone who is codependent and will be able to take care of everything that they have to take care of. It's, it's really... It's really draining. And when you meet people who have been involved with this narcissistic personality, usually they are exhausted, mentally drained, um, don't have much life to them, uh, really don't want to go anywhere. And you will usually see a lot of bad habits in the enabler. A lot of bad habits in the enabler. Like what? What kind of bad habits? Overspending, overeating, undereating, um, housebound, headaches, stomach aches, because they are drained from taking care of this entitled person. And the, the most aggressive and malignant part of the situation is the enabler does not know they are enabling and they don't know how to stop it. And the entitled person has no idea that they even have this going on. So it's like a revolving cycle of exhaustion and it's unhealthy and we need to care enough about them to refer them somewhere or begin to pray for them and if we can't um, recommend them to go anywhere that at least we can start praying for them it's really unhealthy and when it's in relationships it is extremely um poisonous to the longevity of a relationship oh, i see some good people coming on here hello april hello earlene hello Jalice. Integrity force, the numbers are going up. You might win back on Monday. Mm hmm. Somebody on here says, Yeah, they know. Welcome, Minister Cherie. Welcome, Marie. A lot of bad habits tomorrow is in the enabler. And they're usually unhealthy. It is a big drain, huge drain. And for those that actually call up and make appointments because they have this issue, uh, we go in much deeper than we do on the broadcast. But the broadcast is to at least paint the picture you know, wet your palate to give you an idea of something that you may be dealing with in your life or someone that you may be close to dealing with that they really do not know how toxic, that's the word we'll use, how toxic this issue really is. All right, so we then we want to know, well, how did it start? It? How did they get like, did they just, were they just born wicked, just toxic? They're just born entitled? Were they just born that way? What happened to them? Here's the problem. And that's why part of what I had out here today on Facebook when I made the note that we were coming on tonight kind of gave us all a little clue to what was going on and this is where the problem is the problem is right here let me read it to you oh it's below the retweet that I posted tonight did y'all see that uh, master teacher Cindy Trim is engaged and gonna be married Isn't that beautiful she's been saying for about a year now she wanted to be married and God has heard her and blessed her Here's the post that I put up. Although what happens to us as children is completely beyond our control. I don't take it lightly. I do take time to listen to people um, with their childhood issues. There is complete mercy and grace for childhood issues. Um, but this is the key to it. Although what happens to us as children is completely beyond our control. We're only children for about you know, in some aspects, 13 years, some others, 18 to 21 years of age. We're only children for a, a quarter part of our entire life. 
So we cannot keep blaming a childhood for something that's only at least 21 years of our life. If you live to 80, that's a quarter of your life that you let destroy three quarters of the remaining of your life. So we, we're not um, throwing, as they say, the baby out with the bathwater. We do take a moment to hear and, and make some sense of what happened to you as a child. But although what happens to you as a child is completely out of our control, I understand what happened. I know they did this to you. They were wrong. They were guilty. Some were punished. Some were not punished. I understand that it was horrible. I don't take it lightly. Get it out. I understand. However, once you're done, it is now our responsibility as adults to step into our power and reclaim responsibility for our happiness. Do you want to keep blaming mom? Do you want to keep blaming dad? Do you want to keep blaming grandma and auntie and the, the, the unruly school teacher and the, 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 the awful pedophile that was in your family? How long are we going to stay victim to something that happened in the first 21 years of our life and let this monster, this elephant in the room, continue to take over the remaining years of our life. We don't even know how long we have to live. People dying at the movies. People are being murdered in the, the malls. People are being killed at concerts. People are being flooded out of their home. We don't know how long we have anymore. People used to have a lot, stock, and barrel. We lived to our 70s or 80s. And there was a time before that, 90s, 100s. We have no idea. And it seems as though time is moving faster and we're dying earlier. We have no idea. So how long are we going to let these issues continue to, to take over the majority of our life? In, in the Bible, you have the um, bat mitzvah. A, a, a boy or girl is considered bar bat, bat mitzvah. At 13 years of age, there's a passage now. There's a passage until adulthood. You know, I think the law has 16 or 18 years of age um, until you're, con you're considered adult. But we're just going to round it off to the highest possible number so everyone can feel equal and feel good at 21 years of age. But you were 21 years of age how many years ago? And what you experienced was horrible. I don't know how you even survived it. However, you did and you're still alive and it's going on another 21 years and you're still allowing this issue that happened to you no matter how huge it was or little it was, you still allow this issue to take over the remaining of your life. Well, that's what we're here to do. We want to help you get your car out of neutral, get it in gear, and get you moving again. Because what happened to you as a child should not dictate the rest of your life. This is why we quote often, I will decide the destination of my mind. Not the, the bad parenting, not the misunderstanding, not the rejection. We cannot allow things that happen in the first 21 years of our life to rule and govern the rest of our life. It is, it is your responsibility. Thank you, Andrea. It is now our responsibility. It is now your responsibility as an adult to reclaim your power. Oh my God, integrity force, you are hitting it. That's what I'm preaching in the house. That orphan spirit, it shows up in adults and it's, it's oh, when you know the spirit and you see it, it's such a, ooh, it's just, you just wanna, you just wanna do some crazy deliverance with spitting and oil and laying on of hands and you see that orphan spirit. It sabotages your life and it's not cool. Anything you wanna say? No. All right, he's just fascinated. He's not gonna say a word, <laughs> smart man. So where does it come from? Well, I just kind of leaned in and brought us right to that place. It comes from your childhood. It is a narcissistic mindset, and it is the result of failing to learn as a child. That's right. Can't go back. New power. I like that. What happens in your childhood can't rule the rest of your life. But, but trust me, it does in so many cases. It does. Ever since we did the, um, the breakfast on September... 16th, I believe it was, um, the appointments have been just amazing, just heavy duty. And um, people are very interested in getting their life together. People are very interested in prospering again. People are very interested in prospering in their health, in their wealth, and in their soul. And it blesses me. But it happens when you're a child. You are not taught as a child the, the benefits of trials and affliction. You were not taught as a child the power of no. 
You were not taught as a child that no, you're not going to get it now and no, you're not going to get it later. You're not getting it. There, there's, there's a blessing in no and there's a blessing in, you know, not having. I myself personally and a lot of adults that I met have spoiled our children and we did it because we did not want them to go through what we went through. But you know what? I, now that I'm older, realize what I went through may have felt bad only because I compared it to what some other people had in their life versus what I did not have. And I look to it today, I'm not a, a worse off person because I didn't have, we had to go to tag sales and, you know, we had to share clothes with our older siblings. It didn't destroy us. It didn't even really embarrass us. Um, it, it, it didn't take us out. It actually made us better adults in many ways. But we felt some type of way about it because we compared it to how other people were living. And we decided we didn't want our children to go through that. So we, we over materialized our children and we messed them up. So that's one way with people. And another way is you children become entitled because they never had. They never they didn't have birthdays. They didn't have Christmases. They didn't have one parent, never mind both parents. Then maybe they had a foster parent raise them, or they had a um godparent or a grandmother or an auntie. People who didn't really invest in their function and raising them up to be proper functioning adults. They just kind of raised them, we hear often, for the money, or they did it out of sympathy because they had to. There was no other family members that were going to do it, or out of guilt, I had no choice. Your mother was on drugs, so I had to raise you. So what they did was they gave you shelter and maybe food and clothing, but as far as making sure that you were raised as a functioning adult, they didn't have it. So a lot of people I meet never had birthdays, never had Christmases, and now they feel, to this day, they feel entitled to everybody's everything else because of what they did not have. And it is correct what our super fan Cheryl said, it is heavily involved with the orphan spirit, completely. So she may have me dig that back up and, and teach that again. All right, somebody saying I'm guilty. Yep. I praise God that I don't have to go to tax sales, that I didn't have to go to tax sales to dress my son or to dress my granddaughter. I thank God for that, but it didn't destroy me. And it didn't make me uh, uh, love material things and it didn't make me hate material things. It was just what I grew up in and we understood it for what it was. But I thought it was so bad because the other people that I knew didn't live that way. So I, re I refused to have my son go through that. All the trick of the enemy. So what happens? We grow up with this sense of entitlement. I'm entitled to this. Everything's got to be a label and everything's got to be this and everything, you know, it's mine. And some people actually are wealthy. We were talking about this the other day, that not everyone who steals is poor. You know, there's always been this stigma that poor people are always the ones that are stealing. But when you meet people with a sense of entitlement, it's not always poor people who are stealing. There are rich people who steal because they have a sense of entitlement. Um, we did hit on it last time too. Some people go as far as murder. If you remember the Menendez brothers, there's a big story on the on the, one of the crime channels or life channels about them that they murdered their parents. And I don't believe it's supposedly they were found guilty of it. I believe the evidence was all there, but they had a sense of entitlement to what their parents worked hard for. And though they were spoiled, they were in the best school. It wasn't enough for them. They wanted daddy's Rolex. They wanted daddy's Porsche. They wanted um, the, the access to the bank accounts like mommy had. So according to the story, this true story about them, they murdered their parents because they had a sense of entitlement and what blew their cover wasn't that the, the police had any evidence. They had no evidence. What happened was they started going out and buying the Porsche, taking the membership to the country clubs, getting the Rolex watches, taking the trips. And I think they had a couple of cars and a couple of watches. It was, it was, it was over embellished, no doubt about it. But what am I saying to you here? That it's not just poor people that steal. People who have a sense of entitlement steal, they kill, they murder, because they believe that they are entitled of it. Do you know how hard their parents worked probably? I heard their parents were um, foreigners that came from another country and they came here and they worked hard. They worked hard to get what they had only for their spoiled children to grow up and believe that I deserve what they have um, and they don't give me enough and they want to put restrictions on it and they want to tell me when I can do this and when I can, when I can do that. Well, um, I got a plan. We're going to take them out 
because we can have everything they have. And they have a sense in their mind that they, that they deserve it. Thank you, classic church girl. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so it happens from childhood. This is a personality type that happens from childhood. It is related to the narcissistic mindset. You learn it as children, either by being spoiled or either by not having and no one taking the time to teach you the truth accurately so that you can actually grow into a healthy adult. Somebody needs to tell us sometimes when we're children, little Johnny, you're really not so special. You're not so special that everyone else is here to serve you. And that's what people who suffer with entitlement believe. They believe that other people are here um, at their mercy to serve them and to take care of them. And they're in marriages and they exhaust the marriage. They never get to enjoy a beautiful whole marriage because they believe that this person is there solely, completely to suit their needs. And they end up taking life from that individual. And what I have discovered is they actually take from their individual spouse what actually attracted them to them in the first place. They drain them so much with their entitlement mindset that the person that they fell in love with and met, they end up no longer being in love with because they destroy that person through their entitlement issues. Tell me that's not deep. Tell me that's not. And then you begin to say you change. You're not the same when you are exhausted and drained from this person. And then you think, you know, you accuse them of not being the same, but... You drain the life from them. Somebody say preaching. All right, let's go. So we're going to keep going. Does anybody remember what number we got up on last time? And we were talking about how to detect entitlement, how to do a soul assessment, which, which um, let me put this little star in this little side note. We even do assessments. We have emotional assessments. We have assessments to find out if you have a victim mentality. We have assessments on your personality and um, it gives you some idea of where you are and what you're working with because a lot of us don't know what we don't know about ourselves. And when you see yourself on paper, it freaks you out often to say, this thing really answered who I am. How did it know? Because you answered the questions. It gave you an assessment of who you are. And people are blown away. That's why people freak out over fortune cookies. I mean, come on. There's no work put in that thing there. It's just, you know, a roll of the dice. So the first one on our assessment for our soul on entitlement is, do you impose or are um, unrealistic demands imposed on you or your family, your children, your friends, acquaintances, lovers, employees, etc.? Do you know people like that or is it you? And I said unrealistic demands. And it's not some of the time. Somebody would say 80 to 90% of the time, this person imposes unrealistic demands. It means that they will go out and buy things or make decisions on things based on your pocketbook or based on what you're going to be able to fix for them. Because remember, their mindset is, I got to do what I got to do. And it's never what they have to do. It's always what you are going to do for them. Amen. Number two. Um, these people tend to feel sorry for themselves. There's a big wall. They got it. I'm sorry, Facebook Live. I don't know what happened to you guys, but my phone does that even from time to time. So hopefully you were able to keep up and you were able to hear me. Wow, Gina. Inbox me if you will. I'd like to hear it and continue to pray for you. So you have to be very careful because if it's you and you want people, you know, I had a conversation with someone today. It was their first time signing in. And they said to me that lately people have been coming to them. They're, they, they have taken on something new in their life. So this new place that they have to go to, people have been telling them that they um, tend to uh, over dramatize a story that is not the truth anymore. And I asked them why, and we had a discussion about it. And they began to explain how they felt sorry for themselves. So they, they're over dramatic in things and they're always over dramatizing things so that they always look like they're getting the poor end or the bad end or the broke end or the short end of every single thing in life. So they walk around with this pity party. But what we were able to grab from that was that we were so thankful that she actually met people at this new place that were actually honest enough to tell her what they thought about her. 
So I said, well, that's one good thing that you can embrace that. And now we can move forward and do the work to find out where it started at and how to get this thing out of your life. But isn't it amazing? There's actually some people out here that were willing to tell you the truth and let you know what's up about your behavior. That's what you need to find. A few people, three people at least that you can go to and say, how do you see me? And, and let me give you some choices. Do you see me as melodramatic, um, like a pity party, like I'm sorry for myself? And accept their answers. Even if you do not agree with them, accept their answers. Bring it to a coach. Bring it to a spiritual leader. Bring it to a minister at your church and talk with them and find out if this is really a part of your personality. Especially, it's very drastic when they're on Facebook and they're always sharing the woe is me problems in their life. It's always me. Poor me. This is always happening to me. And they're very heavy with the pity party spirit. When you first meet them, if you are an enabler, you jump in and you want to take over their life and you want to help them out and you want to save them and nurture them only to find out that this never changes. They have been in a pity party since they woke up 21 years ago. Are y'all with me? Hello, Apostle Martha. Very good, Vonetta. I like that. Number three, have you ever been called a bully? Or do you know someone around you that you feel is a bully? They are manipulative, ruthless, egotistical, vain, and usually a liar. Lying always falls into this. And it's not that they're lying to only you. They lie to themselves every day. They believe the lie. Remember the soul detox we did on self-injected poison that we inject into ourselves every single day? And it's for people who overthink the priority of themselves, well, now we can come out and just call it what it is. It's entitlement where people lie to themselves and they believe the lie so much that when they begin to tell a story to other people, they're telling them the lie that they already have been convinced of themselves. Come on, have you met them? Is this in you? Is this something that you need to work on? Absolutely. Hello, Gwyneth. Absolutely. And these are things ladies and gentlemen, that should not be ignored in the beginning of dating because he or she is so fine or because they got it going on or they're so educated or they're so holy or they have a career or they're a bishop or they're an apostle or they travel around the world or they're just whatever it is that that one thing is that you really like. These are things that you cannot ignore. You ignore these things, you are going to be biting off a lot more than you can chew. And trust me, this is not something that takes three weeks or three laps around the church or 16 Hail Marys and it goes away. This is not one of those things. This is going to be counseling and it may be counseling for years because the hardest thing to do with someone in counseling is to get them to the truth. They have manufactured their own poison and have been injecting the lies into themselves for so many years that by the time they get to you, their first or their third marriage, they are so blinded by the truth that to get them to a counselor is a major mountain and to get them to be honest in counseling is another major mountain and to get them to admit to the truth with the counselor is tremendous. You've gotten somewhere, but this could take a year or 30 years. So these are things that you should not ignore in people just because they have all the outside stuff that you uh, require or you have on your list of when I get married checklist. Well, you better make another list because once you finish examining the outside, you need to start paying attention to how they act, what they say. Ask them about the news. Ask them about religion and sports and politics. See how they respond, how aggressive they are, how assertive they are, how careless they are. See how they handle frustration and rejection. I watched a comedy once, and they told the couple to take a road trip. And they took a road trip. When they came back from the road trip, they went into the counselor's office, and they screamed at them and said they wanted their money back because uh, the road trip destroyed their relationship. And the counselor said, well, the purpose of the road, road trip was to find out if you two can be in relationship. You get my drift. So they had no idea that the road trip was going to destroy something that should have made them stick together or work together or learn how to resolve conflict instead it broke them apart. So take a road trip with somebody if you can get what I'm saying from this teaching tonight. Anybody with me? Am I connecting? Make another list. That's right, Alan. Because who wants to be in divorce? 
Who wants to go through divorce? Divorce is ugly, it's nasty, and it hurts, and it hurts everybody involved, and it even hurts those who are not involved. People who love you both, families that have been committed to you, and extended family members who took you in and loved you. Divorce is nasty, and it's hurtful, and who wants to go through divorce? But when you come across someone like this, after you're already married, you're probably gonna end up in divorce. You're gonna hurt a lot of people, because these are tough things, baby. Uh, thank you for your transparency, Montez. So watch out. If somebody calls you a bully, find out what that is. If more than one person calls you a bully, find out about that. It's worth looking into. Don't you want to be the best you? Don't you believe, for all my believers on here, that God did not intend for us to just have a good life? He intended for us to have a life abundantly, an abundant life? Well, then you've got to do some of the soul work and you've got to be honest tonight. Is it you? Is it your spouse? Is it your mom? That's another major one we're discovering. A major, major stronghold in our lives. A road trip, all right. A couple of people putting a road trip. Number four, these people will go to great lengths, sometimes extreme lengths, lengths to ensure that their deserved happiness is at the expense of others. This is where we come up with the saying, I have to do what I have to do. They will go to extreme lengths to ensure that their quote unquote deserved happiness is at the expense of others. Can you imagine that? Come on, I got a few minutes left. We're doing pretty good on time. Number five, these personality types, they punish people when they don't do what you want them to do. And they will be either passive about it by giving you silent treatment, gossiping about you, spreading rumors about you, sharing personal business about you, or aggressively attacking you. They will punish you no matter how passive it may be. They will punish you when you don't do what they want you to do. They will bring your name down, your life, your dirty laundry, everything about you. Thank you. Very good, Angie, on Periscope. That's right. This is real live stuff. Um, and also, th aggressively, how they can handle, they'll be shouting where it's be, it will be actually a bullying of you, shouting over you. Not a fear where you get to say something and I get to say something or I'm going to just shoot off like an AK-47 for a few minutes and you won't get the mic. But you'll get the mic in a minute. These people will shout over you and then walk away when they are done. They don't want to hear what you have to say. They don't care what you have to say. They are now in their aggressive form of bullying. And there is no fearness when you are in an aggressive form of bullying. Someone asked me to repeat number five. They punish people when they don't do what they want them to do. And they may do it passively, so don't miss it. Passively, they may do it. And they may do it by the, giving you the silent treatment, gossiping, spreading rumors about you, attacking your character. Um, and then they also have an aggressive side that they'll use against you. And they will shout and bully over you in discussions or arguments. And they can be physically or verbally abusive to you. That's the aggressive side to their punishment when you do not do what you want them to do. And I remember years back when I was in my 20s, you know, about five years ago. And um, that when I was dating someone, they would actually make you feel as though... They went out and been with, were with someone else because you couldn't do what they needed you to do. So they had to get done what they needed to get done by somebody else, but they really want to be with you. You've got to watch these types. And these things often do not show up before marriage. They show up in the marriage. So I'm the reason that you had to go with Becky, but you don't really want Becky, but you had to get what you needed to get. So you went with Becky to get it, but you really want to come back with me. And the cycle goes on and on and on because they've got to do what they got to do. But guess who's paying the price and whose life is caught up in this? It's like, a, a, it's like the, the um, canister of a vacuum. Something has been sucked up and you stay in that vacuum and nobody empties you out. That's right, Pastor Lydia. I'm telling you from my heart, people of God, wake up. Stop saying everything is the devil. 
Stop saying everything is God and use the God-given sense that he's given you. Put people on interviews in subtle ways, not with lists because people are smarter than your lists. But there's ways, and I'm teaching you ways to look out for these personality traits so that you won't get entangled in with this craziness. It, it's it, This toxicity will take your life from you. You will be so exhausted you can't read a book. You won't be able to sit down on a magazine. You are you are you will be so drained that get up to go to work is almost another job. To get up for work is another job because you're mentally drained from this personality type. All right, a couple people know what I'm talking about. So that was number five. They punish you. I give you the passive ways and the aggressive ways. Number six, in order to succeed in life, they believe in going to any lengths, even dangerous lengths for their success. In order to succeed in life, they believe in going to any extreme and dangerous lengths in order to succeed. So it could be at your expense, their expense, they, they don't care. Mama, children, daughter, it does not matter to them. Their mindset is set on survival because remember, they got to do what they got to do. And you cannot fix this person on your own. You cannot deliver this personality on your own. You know, thanks be to God who causes us to triumph. Deliverance can come. But with some, if you believe in this, some spirits and entities and demons that, that, that take hold in our life, they actually take hold of our personality and they corrupt the data per se in us. So you have been cleaned. You have been cleaned from these spirits. You are no longer um, oppressed. You are no longer um, possessed. You no longer have this with you anymore. You, you've been cleaned from it. But your personality has lived with this um, ungodly spirit for so long that your, your character and your personality has been altered due to this thing that's been living in your, your soul for so long that now that you've been delivered, now what do I do? And that's when you need counseling or mentoring. Um, a prophet can help you really well as well. But you've got to reach out. You cannot stay in a relationship when you're dealing with someone like this. And you cannot be this way if it is you. You cannot stay this way any longer. Your excuse of your childhood no longer has any weight. Because what happened to us as children is completely beyond our control. It is now, as an adult, our responsibility to step into power and reclaim responsibility for our happiness now. We rejoice now, not in then, not in what happened then. We rejoice now. So you have to take responsibility and reclaim your life now. Not belittling or taking lightly what happened to you, but reclaiming it now. All right, somebody's with me. Thank you, sweetheart. Um, number seven, they constantly see other people as competition or threats. Thank God we almost done. It's getting exhausting. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. Number seven, they constantly see other people as competition or threats. Come on, I know I'm talking to the house tonight. You know people or you feel sometimes the same way. And this is not just a sometime thing. This is a heaviness where you feel... These people are always a threat to you or always competing with you. You have an entitlement personality and you need help. You can't work in leagues, PTAs, in ministries, in committees. You can't even have girlfriends because somebody's always competing with you or somebody's always a threat to you because you feel entitled to always be the one on top. Don't work like that. Hey, Brit Brit, welcome. All right, come on, I got to hurry up. Number eight, double standards. Double standards. They love having double standards. Yep, very good integrity for us. They love having double standards. In their interactions with people, I can be late, but you can't be late. I can't forego my commitments, but you can't forego your commitments. I can treat myself because I deserve this, but you can't. I can abuse or disrespect you because, but you can never have a reason to abuse or disrespect me. 
They live by double standards. This is heavy. And if you are in relationship with someone like this, you need to call us. If you are one of these personality traits, let us help you. We love you enough to work through the process with you. This is what we do all day, all night. All right, somebody else is understanding. It's real. Number nine, these personalities take more than they give in friendships. You never feel as though the friendship is equal. They take more than they give in friendships. You ever find that? And that's why they love and are attracted to enablers and people pleasers because they can always take from you before someone tells you, look at the friendship you have. It's uneven. I've been in this. It's uneven. It's always about you. You have to do all the driving. It's always you doing all the gas. You paying for all the restaurant. Don't you see what kind of friends you hang around? And I was like, no, I don't mind. It doesn't bother me. I have it, so I give it. And my older women friends would be like, but that's not the point. The point is you are always doing it. Just because you have it doesn't mean you should always be the one doing it. Friendship is equal. Because we're friends and we love each other, I want to pay for the meal even if you make more than me. But people with entitled mindsets will never be that way. It's always a double standard with them. They deserve, they have a reason, they have an excuse, they can forego, they can treat themselves, they can be abusive, but, but don't call it abusive, but you can never get the pass that they get. Double standards. Number nine, uh, or oh, I said it, they take more from friendships than they give. Ten, they look out for their needs and desires more than anyone else. 100% of the time, even when you feel that they've been nice to you, that they've given you something, they've treated you well, whenever you feel um, a little special for them, trust me, it had nothing to do with you, baby. They were either doing it because of something that they're getting ready to come back around for, or they were doing it because it made them feel good to do it. It is never about you why they do anything. That was number 11. They look out for their needs and desires more than anyone else almost all of the time. 11. Um, yep, 11. They have a hard time with negotiating or reasoning. They are like little children. It's my turn to pray to, to play with the Tonka trunk. I want to, you said we were going to share it. They have a hard time as an adult. Because remember, we opened up with entitlement in the first session. People with entitlement issues. They are like little children, but they are adults, and they still have um, temper tantrums. They still spaz out. They still fall on the floor kicking and screaming. They just do it in a little bit more mature way now, but it's still that spoiled little child. So they're not going to negotiate with you. They're not going to reason with you. They have a hard time with that because they got to do what they got to do, and you should understand that by now. We're on number 11. You know they got to do what they got to do. Just make sure when you balance out the scale that you find yourself being the one who's doing what they got to do. Number 12, they have deep-seated convictions that you have and should always put them first, especially unknowingly or more uncaringly at the expense of others. They have a deep-seated conviction that they should always come first, always come first. And when you meet this, this personality type, you may be attracted to them. If your personality type is a little more laid back, a little more relaxed, a little more subtle, you know, you let somebody cut you in line. They can cut you in traffic. You know, you, you just kind of like chill. You just kind of like ride the wave. It's all right. This person will be attracted to you because opposites attract. And you know why opposites attract? Because we like in other people what we wish we had. So it doesn't have to be an extreme, gross, intense anything. Something as simple as, you know, I wish I was a little more aggressive or assertive. Let's, let's, let's stick with the word assertive. I wish I was a little more assertive like she is. Or I wish I was a little more assertive like he is. You know, it's very attractive to me that he is assertive. What she's saying or he's saying is, I'm not assertive. So it's attractive to see someone walking out their assertiveness. So opposites attract, but what ends up happening is you find out that after time has gone by that this whole thing is resolved around them and they are always going to come first. So if you're a little laid back, there you go, Tony. Well, um, part of a narcissist, not full blown. We're talking about entitlement. 
male or female, because we like to make it all male, but it's female as well as male. Um, and um, so they have this deep-seated conviction they should always be first. So watch what it is that you wish you had or wish you were in your life because that is what you are going to be attracted to. If you don't think that you have a good heart, you're going to be attracted to people who appear to you as they have a good heart. If you um, are a procrastinator, you are going to be attracted to somebody who does not have procrastination. Opposites always attract. But you're going to have to look deeper than the attraction that is opposite and check out if it is a personality stronghold that is involved here. This is deep. This is very deep. I wish I was taught this many moons ago. And 13... Pe these people are always upset or always offended by what you say or what you do. Always, always upset and always offended by what you or others say or do. Always got a problem with what somebody say or do. Always, 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 always. Because remember, this goes back to childhood. This didn't happen at the last bad marriage. This didn't happen at the last breakup. This didn't happen when they got fired from the job. This didn't happen because they didn't get the job. This didn't even happen because Johnny wouldn't give him the Tonka truck and the sandbox. This came from poor parenting. And they coaxed and enabled this personality and they grew up to be adult children. You're still there, Periscope? Facebook got it going on tonight. One-way mirror. Good, good. Evangelist said this is very good. They are always upset and offended by what others say or do. 14. They generally think you, that they are better or more important than other people. And other people should see it and respect that in them. So they always have a problem that people do not respect them. No matter how much respect they get, they always feel that they are not respected. Well, why would they feel not respected if they're getting respect? Because they always feel that they are more important than other people. So the respect that they get is never enough. Go ahead, Tony. <laughs> and remember, this is not something that just happened. It's not something that just happened while they were in a relationship with you or they were your employee or when they were your boss or when they were your minister or when you were their member. This goes back to childhood. So it's not something that's going to be fixed in three Hail Marys, three run arounds the room um, or, 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 or three days of prayer. It's not going to happen like that. This work's got to be done down deep on the inside and in their soul and be gutted. They generally think that they are better, so they never feel that they're getting enough respect. And if you're married to them, you are going to have problems with relationships on your own or with other couples because they're always going to be impressing on you that you let these people disrespect them. You let these people dishonor them. You let people do this to them. And no one's doing anything to them, but in their mind, they are because they are better and they deserve more respect. But mind you, respect to others will always be a problem with them because it goes back up to question statement number 11. They are very poor at negotiating and reasoning. They do, Tony. <laughs> I agree. 15. They crave admiration and adoration. They crave admiration and adoration. And you have to really be uh, a full gumball machine that doesn't need quarters because you've got to be dispensing around the clock admiration and adoration from of them because they did not get it when they were younger. So now they are entitled to it. And it is very hard in relationship because you end up being the parent or the mentor or the guardian more than the spouse because you're filling voids that were there before you even met them. And now they're entitled. They got to do what they got to do. All right, our last one, 16. They like to assert their dominion or superiority over other people. It is second nature for them. They like to assert their dominion or superiority over other people. It is second nature for them. It's important to remember that we all fall short 
but narcissism, entitlement, and passive aggressive behavior is never acceptable behavior because these drain from you, they take from you, and they always end up hurting the people around them who they really love. So you need some self-awareness. This is how we're gonna help them. We, we need to get them into some self-awareness and those that enable them and put up with these behaviors and coax them along the way and don't say anything to them from those mothers to those wives to those friends, even to those grandmothers. They have to come one into some self-awareness. They cannot progress very far without self-awareness. Mm, depends if you if you got it in you, Tony. Some people will send you somewhere else and pay the bill. Others will try to work with you. If you've got to know your lane. You know, not everyone can help everyone, but there is someone that can. So the first thing is self-awareness. You have to help them progress. They cannot progress very far without self-awareness. None of us can. The second step is identity. Your inner expectations about the world as well as deep-seated beliefs and ideals. You have to get identity. This is where journaling really helps. Journaling is key into self-identity. I want you to make a little note. Often, a sense of entitlement stems from unhealthy or unrealistic perceptions that you may not be aware of. So journaling helps. The, the third step for your soul help is work. Work. To accept life as if... To accept life as is without imposing your beliefs, ideals, or expectations. This includes practicing forgiveness and allowing people to be the way they are. That's the work that an a, a entitlement personality is going to have to do. You can do replay. You can do replay. I'm giving you all the soul help steps. And the, the letters are A I W C. C-H-S. That's the acronym letters. We are now on work, moving down to concentrate. The first C. Concentrate on developing compassion and empathy. Asking, how does this affect others? How does he or she feel right now when I said this or did this or put this on them or expected this? This helps to broaden the mind of the entitlement mindset and open you to a new and healthy way of thinking. Concentrate. Asking how this affects others. And that's something someone with the entitlement mindset would never think of doing. So we have to bring them into a self-awareness, an identity, a work, and a concentrate. Now another one, celebrate. Other people pay attention on purpose to the happiness of others. Make your entitled personality on purpose, pay attention and celebrate others. It is important that you learn how to celebrate others. Happiness. The next one is happiness. Share in the happiness of other people. Share in the happiness of other people. Here's our hashtag in our closing tonight. I'm trying to go fast for the sake of time. Happiness shared is happiness multiplied. Happiness shared is happiness multiplied. Being thankful for the people in your life allows you to place more importance on them seeing how special they are. Did you hear that? Now that's for all of us tonight. Happiness shared is happiness multiplied. Be thankful for the people that are in your life. Remember in the 30 days in January, we took times and we sent uh, Hallmark cards out but we called them you mark cards. We made it about the person instead of ourselves. We might want to do that again. It's been about nine months. Being thankful for the people that are in your life. And this will allow you to place more importance on them. Seeing how special they are instead of yourself. Tony, you can send it on in here. P.O. Box 123. And the last one, the word is slow. Slow. Work on cultivating true self-love, not the malignant kind. Be slow. Work on cultivating true self-love, not the malignant kind. Change won't come overnight, but with a coach, a mentor, a spiritual leader, or a real good, honest friend and personal dedication, you will be empowered 
and by the help of the Holy Spirit, supernaturally have an intercession go back for uh, go up for you. You can take a permanent turn for the better. Well, I'm done. We got through it tonight. When I come back on next week, we'll be talking about passive aggressiveness. Give me some one line statements up here. Let me hear where you're at. What do you have to say? Did you learn anything about this? Can you recognize it in yourself? Can you recognize it in others? Can you recognize it? Yes. Yes, very good. My live studio audience said he can recognize it. He still has that giant shirt on. We didn't throw him out the room yet, but that's all right. We're going to let him just go on and keep his little happy self there. They lost. Happiness ah, is shared. I, I like that, Tony. Only darkness comes overnight. Can I write that down? I'm going to write that down. I like that one. Only darkness. Did y'all hear that one? Only darkness comes overnight. I really like that. Happiness is shared and multiplied. Very good. He learned something. <laughs> sure was too much. Very good. Got to do journaling, guys. It helps explore what you don't know about yourself. And trust me, when I say it, I even laugh on the inside because I've never enjoyed journaling. I've never been a journaler. I, I just thought it was just, you know, for poetic people and people who wanted to do things like that and never had an interest to it until I learned about the soul and discovered that we really don't know what we don't know about ourselves. And sometimes we don't want to. So journaling gets it out. So no matter what the words are, whatever the language is, no matter how toxic, you have to have a safe place to get it out at. And journaling helps. Very good. All right. Well, I guess I'm going to shut down until next Monday. We're going to stick with Mondays. Are y'all going to look for me on Mondays? Or are you going to look for me on Thursdays? Or are you going to look for me on Mondays and Thursdays? What kind of stuff are we going to do here? Great. Thank you for the hearts periscope. I found out that when we get so many hearts, we get to do some other things on here. So the hearts, I thank you for tonight. I, I asked for them. Um, thank you, Stanley Crossley, for coming on. Sylvia's on. Um, Matthew Jones, welcome. Monday and Thursday. Monday and Thursday. <laughs> no. We'll meet again. You better believe it, sir. We will meet again. Look for us. I enjoyed your commentary tonight. Only darkness comes overnight. It's Brother Tony. He's a brother of ours now. <laughs> yes. Aw. Aura says she's looking for me every day. She's a little cutie pie. We hugged leaving church yesterday. Oh, okay. I'm just going to look for you. That's Regina. I'm just going to look for you. And hopefully it will be near a food stand or a dessert stand or something. Right, Regina? Yep. There's the my um, website. You can go online. Check us out. We try to update it. Um, at least every couple of days, SuzanneMHoward.com, SuzanneMHoward.com. We've got some good things coming up. Another breakfast on December 2nd. The address is to be announced. Hopefully this week I will be able to put the invitation out to invite a hundred of my dearest friends and delegates um, to the breakfast. We're hoping to go over the measure, um, the meter this time um, <clears throat> for the hundred, which we do every quarter, but I mean way over this time. So the website, www.SuzanneMHoward.com. Give us a call. Check us out. Reach out. If you're in the need to, to check out what Soul Detox is, we give you the first consultation free. It's on me for you to check out to see that we are professional. We're serious. We know what we're doing here. And if what you think you have going on in your life is something that Soul Detox can help you with, we don't want you to get involved in something that you don't feel is going to work for you. So you come on board in the first time you come on, you come on free. Ask the questions. Find out what I know about your situation, if I think I can help you. Um, for every call so far, I've been able to give you the agenda of what we're going to work, and I haven't seen it fail yet. So I welcome you on. <clears throat> I welcome your inboxes, your, your emails. We're going to get this wonderful detox tea. And hello, gorgeous tea mug out to Vonetta. Anya, make sure this happens tomorrow. We're going to get it out to Vonetta and um, bless her for knowing tonight that the key cliche or saying for um, people who deal with entitlement is I got to do what I got to do. And welcome, JL. It says this is your first day on Periscope. Welcome. <laughs> I see you guys. So thank you very much. Um, good speed. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. I pray that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Good night and thank you for your time.